And away we go. <laughs> Welcome back to the Getting Salty Experience and another episode of Back in the Day. We got a good one for you guys. I'm joined by my long time cohort, Lieutenant Louis Refrano, and producer Pete, feeling a little bit better today. He still passed it. Oh, no, still he hasn't passed, passed it yet. Still hasn't no, no. passed it. I think we're going to gold plate that. We're going to try and get that thing. Come we're out, gold we're plate mount it. it. <laughs> We got a good show for you tonight it's on the Bonham American Museum that went up in flames back in 1865. A very unique place. Uh, yeah, I'll tell you crazy. one thing, man. I've been Go. in the fire department for, we've been in the job for 20 years. Never heard about this thing. I think, uh, you know, I've been getting a lot of emails from people, which I love. Uh, I'm going through each one the best I can, and even, you know, right back to you guys. But um, I think somebody had originally uh said something about this and it kind of sparked my interest and then i started researching the thing and then i couldn't even believe what the heck i was researching that you know i've been in the city for you know growing up my whole life for god's sakes and then uh to be in the fire department and not know anything about this i mean everybody knows about pt barnum but you don't know how he started and this is really like where that's the building right there that pete's showing that's actually the building that was uh on and in Broadway, across from the church, and um, yep, the church is still there. St. Paul's is one of the St. oldest Paul's. churches is, in New York City. There's some. There's a small cemetery uh, adjoining it. Some of the uh, tombstones go back to the 1700s, late 1600s. If you walk around that cemetery, it's pretty cool, man. It's uh, right down on the end of Broadway, which is close to the Trade Center there, and that's where this huge building was located on the corner of Broadway and Ann Street. Uh, and he, he was there from 1841 to 1865. Uh, it was P.T. Bonham of Bonham and Bailey Circus, which unfortunately no longer exists. Isn't that a shame? Yeah, you have, crazy. Uh, memories of, uh, remember those little lights you bought used to swing around, 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 around the square garden, <laughs> right? In yeah, man. Square garden. Smell like <laughs> elephant shit. And uh, it, yeah. just, you couldn't wait to get that light, right? Yeah, I mean, that was the whole idea was to get that light yeah, that's spun around. because you crack That's crack all you would see. Yeah. And everybody would laugh when the elephant would shit. And you were a kid, the <laughs> elephant shits, and everybody's laughing. You know what I mean? But that's gone. You don't even have the circus no more. No live animals. What a shame. I mean, kids, I, good thing I take call my kids to the circus once at least in their lives. You know? Yeah. I mean, I don't. I don't mind. I don't mind a good human circus like Cirque du Soleil. Have you guys seen that shit? I have. It's an artsy fartsy, but it's, it's a little artsy fartsy hipster. Kind of yeah, like something you would probably go to see, maybe. Yeah. Uh -huh. I don't know. It's. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, my kids wouldn't be interested in it. They want to see basically, you know, they want to see the horses and the and the elephant shit, and they want to see the clowns jump around. Silly. Silly, I tell silly. you. I'm a clown. I'm silly. silly. You, you silly. guys remember when they had the fake unicorn over there? They probably drilled a freaking horn out of that horse's yeah. head. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember what the P is in P.T. Barnum, but the P was Phineas. 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 Barnum. We have a picture of him, don't we, uh, Steve? Yeah, uh, yeah. Like I got him. Him. He's a Scrooge. I got him. Stand by. Stand by. PT. All Martin. right. So you want me? To, you want to start off, Kev? What do you got there? First off, I want to know what you're drinking first. What do you got there? It looks a little like scotch. What do you got? All oh. right. There he is. Look at that guy. Actually, looks like Edgar Allan Poe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so this guy. Look at that face. This My guy God. was like the marketing guru. Everybody oh, knew him. Yeah. He was like today the way that uh times square is right so it's like disney world now right when we were kids it was like hookers and peep shows and now not that there's anything wrong with that no no no, no not, not that there's anything there. wrong with that yeah. you know I'm, I'm not saying i didn't drop a quarter in anything over there maybe occasionally uh but this guy was like that guy in the 18 before the times square was <laughs> times square this guy was the main attraction and he had millions and millions and millions of people go through that building like for 15 cents. I, I have all the paperwork here, but we'll go through that. But to think that this guy was like before the circus, he did yeah, the circus like when he was in his 60s. He started the greatest, greatest showman on earth, man. He, he bought, was the greatest showman on earth. He bought, you know? that, he bought that building in 1841. It used to be Scudder's American Museum. Uh, but what he turned it into was actually a, a circus slash freak show. Um, and uh, he bought the building. It was a five-story building, and he uh, lit it up with limelight. Uh, it opened on January 1st, 1842. It was a combination of a zoo, a museum, a lecture hall, wax museum, theater, and freak show. That's a good picture, Pete. Who doesn't love a freak show? Pete, can you blow that one up? It was huge. 
Yeah, so what he did too was in a, in a time when everything was like drab in the city, on the outside of the building, he painted like everything in yellow and blue and you know all sorts of crazy colors that you would never paint the outside of a building. And um, it just was a natural draw to people, right? It was an attention getter. And he hung flags all over the place. And, uh, you know, he had live animals. He had bands playing. I think I remember reading he had like, bands playing all over the place on the second balcony and just mm-hmm. to attract people. And, you know, he was there for over 20 years. I mean. Uh, and, and the freak show part was, I mean, not only the zoo part, we had all these live animals you would bring into New York City, whales and tigers and shit. You know, but he would find people all over the world, freak shows, like uh, the dog face boy and the midget. He twins, Tom right? Thumb. He had the conjoined th- uh, twins, Chang yeah. and Ang, the Siamese twins. He had yeah. all these exotic animals that people in New York never saw before in their lives, you know? It the was giant ass, Mrs. Swan was the giant ass. She was like some ridiculous thing, like eight foot tall or something like that. Yeah, man. I think she had a, uh, she had a, what do you call it? A husband that had a, uh, that grizzly bears. Uh, train bears. So this guy was really the showman of all showmen, bro. Before he even hooked up with uh, Bailey and Bonham and Bailey. Isn't uh, isn't he the one who said that there's a sucker born every minute? I don't know, uh, I don't know if he was. Yeah, he used to. You know, they used to call it humbug. You got humbugged. You know, like so. We, we think of humbug as when I was reading some of the stuff as like a Christmas thing, right? A well, humbug. Yeah. Uh, what humbug was then was that. He would get you to come into the show, right? He painted the outside. He ran all this crap outside, like a you know smoke and mirrors type of thing. He would get you fifteen cents, and once you got in, twenty five, twenty five cents, twenty five cents. You either when you got in, you either you know fifty percent of the people believed it, what was going on with these these uh, curiosities or whatever the heck you want to call them, these attractions, and fifty uh, percent scoffed at him. But he didn't care because he already got the mool. He already got the moolah. You know what I mean? So. Right. Yeah, man. He used to call. They used to call that humbug back then. So it's right. How we call it. The, he has the kind of numbers he was doing, bro. He would have. It was open fifteen hours a day. He was getting fifteen thousand people a day, and uh, <clears throat> some thirty-eight million customers paid twenty-five cents admission to attend the museum between eighteen forty-one and eighteen sixty-five. So, Mister P.T. Bond was doing all right for himself there, bro. Yeah, so, so and, and Louis, you may want to you may want to uh, back out of the room and come back in. You you sound like you're underwater all of a sudden. So oh, so uh, it's not my internet. <laughs> oh, look at you! Oh, he's frozen. Yeah, Louis, oh, you want to try to come back, buddy? Go yeah, ahead. man. All right. So, dude, at 1860, you're talking about 38 million people pay 25 cents between that time. In the United States, in 1860, the population was under 32 million so he had 38 million people pay to see it in those years so they were coming from all over the place to see this bro can you imagine that kind of money and then in that time that kind of money was insane and then yeah and there you go there's a sucker born every minute is a phrase uh closely associated with pt barnum an american showman of the mid-19th century although there was no evidence that he actually said it uh, early examples of its use are found amongst gamblers and confidence men. Wow. AKA con you, got, men. you got me here? You got me? Yeah. You got I, was you just, I was just telling Pete that 38 million people went to his museum at yeah, the time when the, when the population of the U.S. was only 32 million. So that's a lot I'm of I'm telling people. you, the guy was the guy. You he know, probably like, uh, had you know, something similar to the amount of money that you have. I'm just saying. <laughs> you know, just throwing it out there. If you guys don't know, Refrano is <laughs> <laughs> Can you say slumlord? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> the word of the day minute. is slumlord. <laughs> <laughs> was P.T. Bar- P. Barnum the Lou Refrano of his time? Negative. Negative. Bit, man. You know what I mean? Negative. Listen, so with the fire, I think it was 1865, roughly, right? Uh, but All right, was, so here, this is what before, I got. Even before that, though, 1864, the Confederate Army of Manhattan attempted and failed to burn down the museum. Yeah, so I have the same thing. I have Bonham's Museum was New York's destination for the fascination and the weird. Millions would visit its corridors during its two and a half decades of operation. It was renowned, so renowned, that it was even a target of attempted sabotage during the Civil War. So, yeah, so... uh, uh, So P.T. Bonham was making some cash. Yeah, so I have here, so the next thing, at, at around noon on July 13th, 1865... The building quickly succumbed to, this was in the paper, the fierce tooth of fire. 
you know, got to love it. Uh, causing the greatest pandemonium that New York City had ever seen. It was uh, filled, right? The place was filled with it. It was, it was absolute pandemonium. I think it was caused by a, a gas leak at a restaurant next door, right? Uh, I do have that a little bit further down. So oh, sorry. The, I didn't mean to step on your uh, shit on your birthday cake. Go ahead. What happened? Oh, no, no, no. It's all right. So, so in the New York Times had reported this. So this is a couple of excerpts from the, from the papers, which I thought was pretty cool. So I wanted to read them off. Probably no building in New York was better known inside and out. Uh, to our citizens than the ill-looking, ungainly, rambling structure on the corner of Broadway and Inn, known as the American Museum, where for more than 20 years, Mr. Barnum has furnished the public with a wonderful variety of amusements. Uh, the New York Sun said about half past 12, 12 o'clock yesterday, the engineer rushed up from below announcing that his room was on fire, and about the same time, immense, immense volumes of smoke permeated the Ann Street end of the building. Knowing that the immense well tank was directly over the spot where the fire had begun to make headway, he attempted to knock a hole in the huge tank. Like he had it as reservoir, but they they tried. He tried to knock a hole. I don't know what the, the whale tank, tank. Was. in hey, the guy, well tank. Hey, the guy was thinking Jesus. outside the box, bro. You know what I mean? You yeah. gotta give him credit. So so it goes on. It says the <laughs> occupants of the tank tanks were doomed. The two whales were imported. Believe this. At a cost of seven thousand dollars at that time, I can't even imagine what the, what that was like. Figured out, you know, hundreds of thousands probably from the coast of Labrador, whose plunges and animated contests of affection afforded constant amusement to hundreds of spectators. Uh, was a huge contrast to the fearful death by roasting and boiling, which they were soon thereafter thereafter met. Nice. So, these, so these. They were, he, he drained the tank. And <laughs> no, no, they didn't drain. He didn't end up draining it. He tried oh. to. He didn't end up draining it. Oh, so he tried to, and they just boiled in the water. They boiled in the water. Yeah. Oh, my God. Can you imagine a boiled whale? A, what is a beluga, it looks like? Mm -hmm. what is that? I don't know what that is. They were two beluga whales, yes. Two oh. beluga whales. But you know what was cool about this guy, too, I was reading? Like, he would make shit up. Like, uh, he had yes. uh, a mermaid. <laughs> <laughs> he had a mermaid skeleton, but what he did was he took a back of a fish skeleton and he put it together with a monkey skeleton and he would put that yeah. on display as a, as the only um, mermaid corpse to be ever found. But <laughs> he, again, it was the same thing, right? He didn't care if you scoffed at the thing, like after you paid your money. He didn't care yeah. as long as he got paid, you know. Now, it, no wonder why they burned this, Dude, tried to burn I, this place I down. You know story, I mean? bro. I go to, uh, I'm with my wife and kids. And we're in uh, we're in Jersey, and they got this country fair, right? So we go to the country fair, and they got a freak show there. And there's a little thing that says "This way to Tiny Tina." I'm like, "You want to go see Tiny Tina?" And my wife's like, "Nah, I don't want to go see Tiny Tina." So I asked, "This is when my 18 year olds were like seven. I go, "You want to go see Tiny Tina?" They go, "Yeah, I'll go see Tiny Tina." So I pay like five bucks each. This better and not be a donkey show. <laughs> Dude, you walk through, you walk through, and I swear to God, there's Tiny Tina just sitting like in the Queen's throne, and it she it is just, I think it scarred my kids to this day, bro. I asked them about <laughs> Tiny Tina, and they freak out because she was like I don't she had to be about she had to be about this big, bro, something like this. A big. real person, no. a real person, and you could talk to them like. Holy shit, Tiny Teen is a real person. Was like, she smoking this, cigarettes? Was she like pissed <laughs> off that she was there? Like, you know. But it was so scary. You know, the what what the fuck are like, you kids looking at? Yeah. They freak out when you say Tiny Tina. <laughs> hey, look up Tiny Tina. See if you find Tiny Tina on yeah, there. I got you. I got you. I got you. Oh my God. Wait, where was no, this? Wolfie. Tiny Tina, where? Just, uh, just put Tiny Tina Freak Show. So you want me to continue? I got more. Yeah, go, go. As I uh, right. show my look at this. So, like, how do you like this Arctic cup, bro? Ooh, ooh. keeps it chilly. So the okay, fire right. spread rapidly, quickly, filling the upper floors with smoke. A fireman burst into the St. Anne Street side and quickly attended to patients who had collapsed or were too confused in the immense labyrinth of bizarre objects to escape. His name was William McNamara. Nice Irish oh, guy. An Irish guy. Now, these uh, were all volleys at the time, right? Or they were what? before. Those it's two. right there, 18, 1865. That was the time, right? When the, when the Metropolitan yeah, was it? Guess what? who I found? You found no Tiny way. Tina? You Throw it up. No there, right? Here she comes. No. Tiny no. Tina. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> you got to see a better picture than that, bro. It's the only one I could find, man. Oh, I'll, I'll keep looking. <laughs> Take that shit off. 
Ah, <laughs> I need Tina. Good God. So uh, they were following, right? They were pulling the wagons behind them, right? Correct? I mean, that's not far from the, the five points over there, right? Yeah, that's right there. Not too far from there. Tammany Hall should be somewhere over not there. Not too far from there. So this guy is credited with single-handedly evacuating many patrons of the museum, not to mention some of the performers uh, who regularly perform there. Uh, in the New York Sun, they said, uh, knowing that occup knowing that some performers occupied apartments on the third floor, he rushed hither, believe it or not, and mm -hmm. burst open the doors. Finding the rooms empty, he ascended to the next floor. Sounds like me. And <laughs> succeeded in bringing down the ladies. Nine rooms uh, deep. Nine Frano. rooms deep. Frano. Assembled in the dressing rooms, there was Mrs. Swan, the giantess. And Mrs. Zerby, I don't know, something circus Asian, <laughs> circus Asian girl. <laughs> Can you say circus Asian? Taylor at Burton, 1865. I saw that. 1865, yeah, yeah. Yep, it was uh, uh, July, July 13th, 1865. So, so what else was happening was they had like these wax figures in, in the building. So people were grabbing the wax figures because they had fallen over to try and save, you know, it was kind of like a backdraft. Uh, movie you know what i mean where they, they were grabbing oh, yeah. the mannequin i got it i got one <laughs> and he melted in their hands yeah but uh, they also had like people running out like the tigers and all the wild animals yeah well out, i'm right? getting so so there oh. was uh yeah i got the whole thing here kid sorry, uh so more seriously on the more serious side on top of all the maniacs and the, the, the midgets and everything that were running out of there uh a great number of artifacts from the Revolution, Re Revolutionary War were incinerated in the fire. Mementos from Washington, Putnam, Green, uh, Cornwallis, Clinton, Jefferson, Adams, and other uh, prominent not, men. Not Bill. It wasn't, it wasn't the blue. It wasn't press. Bill. No, they didn't have any. I was never there. Can you say no, that? I can't, can't yeah. pin that yeah. one on me. <laughs> they didn't have any cigars back then. From Oh, oh my booze. Uh, oh, there's the animals scurrying out. Yeah, so they had they had a big uh, collection of taxidermy with all of that stuff, monkeys and all that stuff. Um, you know, elephants. In fact, I think if I remember right, uh, Barnum uh, with his circus later on because he was such a showman that he had an elephant that was tremendous. It was named Jumbo, right? And that was before the word jumbo was actually in the English language. Really? And that's why, yeah, so it was. It got killed in a tra train wreck. And he, Jeez. he skinned it and donated the bones to the American Museum of Natural History. And it was there forever until uh, something happened to do it there. Uh -huh. But the word jumbo um, came about, meaning a big person, a big, you know, something big. Because big of bone. that elephant, right? Big bone. Really? Yeah. Who's yeah. the guy that you said, John Denham, or was that somebody else? What guy did you say? Who? Who's the Irishman that you? Mac Damara. Oh, there's a guy, Johnny Denham, who killed an escaped tiger with his axe before. I heard that story too. Bill. Now that's balls right there, bro. <laughs> Who's got that? The roofman. <laughs> I don't you got, you got the tiger, roofman. You got the rhino, all right? <laughs> Look at these hard charges over here, guys. Hold on. Yeah, man. It said this guy killed a, a, an escaped tiger with his axe, and then he rushed in and carried out a 400-pound woman. Uh, oh. That's a little... Yeah. That's that a good – you got. You need a good write-up, though. You know what I mean? You need a good write-up. Oh, bro, he, he should have got a medal right there, pulling a 400-pound woman out of there. Christ's sake. Jeez. Well, they were saying that the animals, they were finding them running around for, like, weeks, you know, after the fire. <laughs> You know what I mean? It was just wild animals. You know, maybe not elephants, but you know, monkeys and all that stuff, birds and stuff like that. Well, it was it a tiger because Johnny Denham killed him. The he, knows, he knows how to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, Yoakum two ninety four asks if you can teach a monkey to do Pete's job, <laughs> and the answer is that. <laughs> no matter. What do you got to get? What do you teach him with? Peanut? I don't even know what you're giving. Oh, oh Pete yeah. or the monkey? Oh. <laughs> I need mean, vagina. That, that's uh, a very motivator. Uh, uh, all right. So I also have that remarkably no humans died in the blaze. Wow. Uh, yeah. No way. Yes. No way. Not one. That's because, you know, Nine Rooms Deep McNamara was in there oh, grabbing man. people, saving babies, bro. I got, I got a question for you. 
Josh, and you guys would know this. So at that time, what were they rolling with the steamers? Yeah. Oh yeah, they were they were they were uh, push they were they would uh, push them run with it. There wasn't even no horse steamers. They were probably uh, pushing those bad boys. No way. Yeah, so yeah, these guys. These guys ran like the first um, episode oh, yeah. that we did. These guys ran to the job and pushed well, the. Those guys ran to the job after the uh, chauffeur took the steamer with the horse. These guys pushed the steamer by hand. Yeah, and we, were there were there hydrants back then or not? Yeah, there was yeah, hydrants. Was hydrants. Oh, yeah. Okay, so that's their source. Got it. Got it. Got yeah, it. Man. Got it. Holy crap, man! You know so what they're saying too. They're saying they wonder if. Uh, but uh, it was the first time that they had fire insurance. And uh, it says the fire policy was ha of Hartford in 1815. They're wondering if PT, if, if Barnum was scamming the insurance company. If they had a couple of hmm. little, little uh, Jewish lightning or something like that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, they, they actually, he never tried to, oh, he tried to open it, but it wasn't happening. And they put the New York Herald newspaper in that same location. I don't know how long that was there. Uh, what's there today? Do you know, Ruffy? Yeah, there is. Uh, I had that building. I just wanted to before I forget that, that building after, at around one thirty in the morning. So this happened like seven around one thirty. It started like getting into the other buildings, and it ended up basically the reason why New York City is you know has big avenues is because it went block to block, and it took a, it took the whole it took the whole block actually. So uh, here, let me show you guys what it looks like today. Never let it. Uh... We it don't looks lose like much. such shit today. Look at this. What does it look I, like? fucking, I hate downtown. It looks like such shit. Look at this. Oh, huh. it's a fucking Staples. You know? Yeah. That's, well, that's we, exactly we need it. Right there, Pete. Yeah, because what? the the hotel, what? the uh, church should be right across the street. Yeah. Hold on. Look at Pete. See, Pete's earning his money today. Pete's bouncing back. Forget the monkey shit, bro. <laughs> <laughs> That's the church there. Yeah, That's yeah. The church so I shot a bunch of interviews for Fox with some FDNY guys in this church, like kind of going back to 9-11, because I know this was a point for you guys, a point for you guys to uh, regroup, sleep, uh, eat, all that, right? Yeah, you know, they had a couple of spots, Pete. One of them was actually a ship that they brought into the harbor there that people we would sleep on, grab some grub. Uh, a couple of churches uh, would offer some grub, and you would take your breaks. Maybe catch, I remember the I remember the ship used to eat on the boat. Yeah, maybe catch 15, 20 minutes of sleep, grab some grub, and uh, hey Pete, yes sir, zoom in right there. Let me show you something. You see that? What on is that shirt? thing? No, to the right more a little bit, right on the yeah. corner. That that <laughs> whatever that thing is, right on the corner, straight ahead. Green pants. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, come on, she's got kids. What's the matter? Uh, yeah, 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 right, yeah. right to the left of her. That that monument there. You see that monument that's on the corner? That right it. there. Yeah, 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 you see that? I yeah. stood on that when in 1994 when the Rangers won the Stanley Cup and they came down Broadway for the ticker tape parade, and I I was on top of that. What kind of monument were you desecrating at that point? Yeah, I don't think I think it's just I think it's the corner uh you know for the for the fence actually. It's just like a cement uh you know oh, I see what you're saying. You know, I wasn't on like some guy's uh headstone. I, I got some coot, you know what I mean? I'm not an animal. I hear what you're what are we on it? What are we on it, Molly? You gotta go back to your wife, Henry. You gotta go home. All right, so I got here Henry, you know there's no, there's no you go you gotta go home. You know that, right? <laughs> Come on! I mean, listen. I, we all know. What listen, we know what it, we all know what it is. It is what it is. We it all is know what it is. is. You gotta but, go. Uh, and you gotta she's go coming home. over. She's saying, gotta, "My oh. wife, she's commiserating." I can't have it. <laughs> commiserating. Have it. They're commiserating. I can't have yeah, it. I can't. I you can't gotta go home. You gotta you go got, home. Henry, you gotta go home. <laughs> well, now what are we? You're not getting a divorce. What are we, animal? Animal. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right, we got, uh, go. all right. So for years after, people mourn the loss of the Barnum's collection. Uh, truly among the greatest in New York City until that time. Barnum attempted, this was another thing, he attempted to relaunch the museum uh, a couple of blocks uh, north on Broadway, mm. uh, but it too was destroy, destroyed in fire. That's the picture. That was in January. We have that mm. picture, Pete. Another fire. Mm. It had all, yeah, exactly. It had icicles hanging off it. Um, can you imagine pulling up to a job and you got tigers running out and like thousands <laughs> of people running out and elephants running out? Kind of like Brooklyn. Not only that, but 
<laughs> and you, got, you got basic tools. You got guys out there pumping. You don't have a pump, but you guys out there pumping the pump to get water. No. You know no. what I mean, bro? That's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. On top of everything, you got a 400 pound cat that can that's, fucking that's eat. That's the second. He only had that open for a few years. Um, oh, that's, and that's a real picture, though. That's not yeah, a. Yeah, that's a real picture. That's not a drawing. Roll that up, Petey Pete. So that was 1870. Uh, when was that? Like 1871. Oh, look at that, man. Yeah. yeah. Man. Jeez. So he then leased a train depot and called it Barnum's Monster Classical and the Hippodrome, which actually morphed into the first Madison Square Garden. And that, that was on that right where Madison Square Garden is. That's where that property was. That's where he had it. Um, and then he decided to take his collection of uh, acts freaks. on the road. Say that? His freaks. Yeah. Forming a traveling circus in 1881. He was in like his 60s or 70s. Um, and he started that with ringmaster uh, James Anthony Bailey. Oh, Barnum and Bailey Circus. Barnum and Bailey Circus. And that actually, his name, uh, Bailey bought it from him when from his, I guess, uh, you know, his, his estate. When he, his he, estate. Exactly. He Thank you. I think of it. Bailey bought it. He bought it and he kept, Barnum was so popular, he kept Barnum's name first, even though he owned the circus. So oh, it was yeah. P.T. Barnum's wow. and Bailey Circus. Oh, well, he knew That's that name smart. was uh, big, right. you know? Yeah. That would be a lot like, uh, yeah. Kugler and Refrano. You have to put my name first. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know where I'm coming from, right? Whatever. I don't care. Ah! So, so out of curiosity, boys, what, what kind of tools were these guys working with in general? Well, they didn't have a Halligan back then because the Halligan wasn't uh, invented until Halligan invented in what year? That's a good question. 1865. I would say you just had like an axe. They probably had a hook of some type. Uh, they probably had some kind of sledgehammer with an axe. It was 1865, uh -huh. you say? No, Let's what year what I... was the Halligan invented? Oh, Halligan that's not until way later. 40s? Wait, what? Yeah, yeah, wait, 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 wait. Wait. 1853 was the they fire. Had they had different types. You know, you know, uh, they had pry they had balls. balls and claw tools and all that right. stuff. They didn't have the Halligan. That was a New I, York I'm going to say 50s. That was a New York City fireman who invented the Halligan. Correct. His last Dude, name was Halligan. Uh, go figure. If you invented it, it would be the, the roughy tool. The roughy tool. Roughy tool. I'm sure I have a few tools out there. Uh, the tool was first designed by and named after a New York City Fire Department. Yeah, FDNY motherfuckers. Uh, first, first deputy chief named Hugh Halligan in 1948. Later that year, later that year, the first prototype of the Halligan bar was made by uh, Peter Clark, a blacksmith, because the device. Uh, had been invented by one of its members. The FDNY did not initially purchase the tool because of a perceived conflict of interest. Fucking A. Yeah, this Let's totally works. It. Let's not buy it because it yeah. looks fishy. Yeah, because he might make some money on it. We don't want somebody in the job to make money on it. And That's now look at it. Uh, you, can you imagine how many of those have been sold all around the world? Oh, Halligan. my gosh. Oh, I, I know how many little Halligans we sell. The bottle of Can you imagine <laughs> how many real Halligans we sold? Holy shit. I'm just uh, curious. Like this, the fire was in 1853. 1865. So I'm just 1865. Sorry, so 1865 fireman tools. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look this up because I think it's kind of an interesting thing. Like to know, like what were their were they they were just wearing leathers, right, guys? What helmets? Yeah, everything. Helmets yeah, and jackets. Helmet. Uh, did they have coats know. back then? I have no oh. idea, bro. I honestly, I don't know what the hell they were wearing. I mean, for Christ's sake, they didn't have bunker gear in the FDNY until 1995, right? Yeah. So, okay. so getting, I wanted to. Uh, guys I would, didn't wear their masks until uh, guys never wore their masks, you know, in the 70s. 70s they started your dad, wearing them. Your dad never wore a mask, right? Well, my dad? Yeah. Yeah, towards the end of his career. He got out in 1960. Maybe in the beginning he didn't, but. Right. You know. Oh, speaking of which. <sighs> ah. Is that his? That's his. That's his first one. Twenty-eight truck. How you doing? How you doing? Wow. Fits your head. You Fits my head perfect. Look. Where's oh. his? Uh, where's the front piece? You have them all like a plaque I or have something. His, his, the one he retired with upstairs in my curio cabinet next to mine. But this was his very first one. Took a beat and it's got a little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They always ride it out. They ride it out. But is I that, tell you, is, this, it, is it next to Hosh's? You know, uh, what challenge coin up there in the curio? 
It is next to Hasha against Challenge. Right? Yeah, man. We're gonna have a helmet day one day. <laughs> Everybody's got to wear their helmet that they went on the job with. Pete can wear his army helmet, whatever that helmet you got with. The... I was never in the military. I must. Uh, wow, well, the other thing that you got. Well, you just went through passing a stone, so I'm sure but... that's like comparable <laughs> to. Well, I not that, never, but maybe. I never, I never signed my my name on the dotted line up. I didn't say it was comparable. I was trying to, you know, give no, 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 like no. you've been no, through no, some pain happens. in your life. I like to shoot guns a lot, and I'm good at it. And wear I like cushy to, earmuffs. And I like and to wear cushy earmuffs. Of, and he has a lot of guns in his hat. Wait a minute. And he, <laughs> 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 guy's got a bigger gun vault than my garage, I think. What, I what, are, you talk, what are you talking about? Uh, <laughs> Maniac. Never mind. Uh, so, so, so next I'll, week, listen, when we have Evans on, it's helmet day. You got to put your right. lid on. I'm going right. to get mine. I'll tell Evans to put. Oh, by the way, I'm already giving it away. Next th uh, this Thursday, Captain Tom Evans of the Squad Company 288. He was my captain. I drove him for I don't know how many years. Uh, he's got. It's a very funny guy. Funny guy, man. Funny he actually guy. came. He started uh, out in Brooklyn. Then he went to the Boogie Down, Harlem, Harlem, and then he was a lieutenant in 45 truck, the Might of the Heights. And then uh, wasn't he fifty eight or something? Wasn't he? Uh, maybe I got it wrong. I don't remember. Oh, they want to call you Pistol Pete now. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of so, them. No, so he was, in, he was in forty truck, I think. Life begins at forty. And yeah, Hall, we'll get the, we'll get the whole school. Scary. But very yeah, funny guy, whole, man. dude. Guys, we can't wait to get back out there to do the spotlights on. We're going right up to Harlem, twenty eight truck. Harlem. Be, as soon as this just, uh, uh, bonnet is over, we'll be up there. We'll be in the firehouse. We'll be running around Harlem, eating Sylvia's soul food, checking out the neighborhood, telling you all sorts of scary uh, Harlem stories. So, so listen, are you, ta are, you take where, are you closing out the show already? <laughs> I mean, where are you going? I got <laughs> I'm, watching, you know, I'm watching I'm the not, guy. He said this looks like a condom on my head. <laughs> <laughs> I said I I had a uh, I wanted to tell my story. I had a similar story. Oh, uh, I, after I was I Richard was doing Anderson, the, Rich Anderson says about I, the Mohawk. How you like I, the Mohawk, fellas? I get a I get a purple dick medal for passing a stuff. <laughs> you didn't pass it yet. You don't get anything yet. You didn't pass shit yet. He's still oh. like this. Oh, what is me? I don't know. I We're gonna go. Ah, ah. Ah. Hey, honestly, if it comes down to it. I, if I have to get another one of these, I might fucking take one of my guns to the beach and just blast myself in the face because I don't really? want to do this. It's that painful. Man up. Will you man Can up, I take please? Take your old lady and console her. <laughs> Is that okay? Liaison. You could be the liaison. 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 I'd like to be <laughs> first to a box. I'm, I'm dead right. and out of pain, so go for it. So you're, you're good. My old, you're all right with that. Yeah, my old lady's box. So let's do it, a box. 10, 10, 10 so I had this situation uh, <laughs> similar to old lady's box. <laughs> Actually, we're getting to see uh, uh, Kevin's actual height right now. Kev, tilt your camera. <laughs> tilt your <What>? camera. <laughs> you look like a fucking. Oh, he hit me with a short <laughs> joke. Oh no! What no, 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 no. <laughs> did you get out of the lollipop guild? They let you out early. God, <laughs> dude, you're taking a beat it from Pete. Dude, you see this skin? It's in perfect. Right, don't think you shit off nobody. There's nothing he can say that gets through this, bro. I've heard it all. I grew up with two, two brothers, three brothers, five in my uncle, my father. You think he's going to say something I haven't heard? Come on. I don't know. My he's trying hard. He's my trying balls. hard. My father was breaking my balls at the kitchen table when I was six. All right. <laughs> trying hard. Moving on. Louis, what are you trying to tell us? That we were all I don't know. I've been trying to tell something for like 15 minutes. You guys oh, are sorry, man. the show. I don't know what's yeah, going no. on. Is everybody, yeah. uh, you know. Yeah. Uh, so I'll make a long story long. When I was doing this uh, research on this, and they were talking about all the animals running out on fire and all sorts of crazy shit. Uh, it popped a story into my head that I kind of forgot about, that uh, we were a squad. And uh, I, told, I talked to Kevin this morning to see if he was involved in this, but uh, he wasn't at this job. Uh, 252 was an engine, uh, which is the squad in Brooklyn, and they had a first due job. So when the squad has a job, a squad from another uh, borough would respond to that box. So 252 gives a 1075 for firing a top floor of uh, row frames. Yummy. And yeah. so by the time we get there, it's into both exposures and uh, it's going, it's going good. Super so, uh, yeah, I had the roof. Stern. 
Sem to Stern. I jump in. Uh, 111 was an extra truck there. And the uh, yes, the nut house. And uh, as I, I had my saw and I see the guy, he's going up. I'm like, I jump in the bucket with you. He's like, get in, which I was surprised. And uh, so as we go up to the roof, we're getting uh, we're getting close to where I could see over. And the fire is kind of through the roof and in, in uh, the main fire building, but it's coming out. The guys have holes in, in both exposures, and there's some you know fire coming through uh, some some cut holes already. And I don't know if people know this, but uh, in the old days in New York City, uh, in Brooklyn, mostly in Brooklyn, in the Bronx, uh, mostly like Italian neighborhoods, Spanish neighborhoods, they people would fly pigeons. They would have pigeon coops, and uh, you know it's they would hobby. take it. Yeah, it was a hobby. They would take care of the birds. They would fly them, you know, like in groups and they would mix up with the other groups and you would try to get the other guy's birds, basically, you know, in a nutshell. So my family had pigeons. My grand, my uncle had pigeons. My father had pigeons. So I grew up, you know, it's a cleaning. Thing. Yeah, it is. It's cleaning the coops, doing all that stuff. You know, as a kid, I love doing it. So I get to the top and in the exposure roof, there's a pigeon coop and it's a pretty big coop. And the guy, I guess, who owns the pigeons is in there trying to shoo the birds out, right? <laughs> but they don't want, you know, it's a big coop. Yeah, and the fire now is taking off, right? So now guys are cutting holes and all this stuff. And I, I, I'm i already cutting a hole. And now it's extending back to where the coop is. And I remember looking up, you know, guys started pulling, me, pulling each other back because the fire was extending, you know, through all the holes. And I remember looking and seeing like the pigeons like flying on fire, like they were like flying out and they were, you know, doing dive bombs into the yard. And, and then if you looked into the coop itself, it was like rotisserie chickens. Yeah, yeah, it was like rotisserie chickens. They were all hanging. Like, I guess their feet would clip onto the, uh, you know, whatever they were sitting on, you know, and they would yeah. You know, face down. Now they looked exactly like, you know, rotisserie chickens. Like you went to the Spanish place so, on the corner, and they had a little. Yeah, uh, you would have had it for. You, know, you only had to do a little dollar over there, but now you got a couple of. Uh, <laughs> but that's, uh, that's they had the flame yeah, it was pretty, pretty. The flame, they were flying out of there on fire. I thought mm. they were going to set another building on fire somewhere else. Now the, the, those birds are uh, actually super smart, really cool. Actually, they flip pigeons in, a, a lot now. Um, in the hood mainly well, that's what they do they flip pigeons but hotel. as i was driving i recently was watching a guy flipping pigeons on the bqe uh right when you get out of the battery tunnel and you're heading towards the uh um you know to make that left towards the the vet mm -hmm. <laughs> um, the up there, you know clapping and they were doing flips and turns and it's yeah, that, they have a white flag too on a stick right but yeah 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 yeah, yeah exactly yeah, yeah. Seen that. <laughs> I got a story too, something like that. <laughs> so, Pete, I'm up in uh, 16 truck on the Upper East Side. I worked there for a little while, see what, what Manhattan was like. So, in our first new area is a place called uh, the Rockefeller Institute. Mm -hmm. so I'm only there maybe a month, and the guy tells me we, we're passing as we drive by. He goes, "If we get a job here, don't go in." I'm like, "What do you mean, don't go in?" <laughs> He's like, "Yeah, man, they do all sorts of crazy research in here. You know, they." Uh, they research viruses and they research sicknesses and they research all this crazy shit. I'm like, all right, sure yeah. as shit. Like two months later, bro, we get a fucking job in the Rockefeller Institute. Huh. And we go in there and I swear to God, it was my version of P.T. Barnum. They had a whole room that looked like a hippodrome, like a fucking um, glass thing full of just mosquitoes <laughs> they were doing, uh, just full of mosquitoes and all over the place they had different animals and i was just on the thing looking before i said i, I don't remember exactly what happened but i look i wanted to look at the rockefeller institute and they do research on like foreign viruses and sicknesses and i mean it was a little fire it was a nothing fire but it was just weird that the guy told me like two months hey you ever get a fire don't go, don't in. go in there <laughs> don't Jeez. go in there <laughs> I had a couple of those where the guy told me not, a couple of hardware stores, you know, like, uh, you know, like the first floor had so much weight on it. You couldn't even believe like the thing was still standing. You know what I mean? You yeah. would go down in the basement on inspections and it was like a couple of metal yeah. poles. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. Some wood stakes <laughs> holding the thing up. Like if there was a fire in the basement, you would, you know, you would take yeah, an man. express down. There. No. Yep. Screw that shit. Yeah, man. 
What do you got? Yeah. What else you got, Ruffy? Any questions in the chat, Pete, before we wrap this bad boy up? Let's see. Uh, uh, I saw a lot of comments flying by. I love it. Yeah, but it's a bunch of, you know, a bunch of ways, guys. Ming, did you guys carry start carrying loaves of bread <laughs> on the rig to feed the birds? Ming. <laughs> <laughs> Tell one uh, bird story. That's it. That's it. Now it's your your pigeon Lou. Your pigeon uh, Lou. Louis the got. pigeon. I don't Mickey want a pigeon. Fish. Lou, were you on the squad? Uh, oh, here we go. Lou, were you on the squad when it was involved in an accident on a 1077? Hmm. I mean, I've been involved in some accidents, but... Uh, I wasn't driving, so I know. I was in no accident in 1077. No, I don't think so. I don't think I was. Gentlemen? 1077? It's a high-rise fire. High-rise high fire. High-rise commercial fire, I think, right? High it is. High-rise fire. 1076 is high rise commercial um residential multiple building. dwelling yes uh shout out to the hey voodoo uh, 2762 shout out uh from the uk firefighter that's awesome that you across the pond the hello, hello. hello. Hey. fire brigade <laughs> Let's see. someone wants to know if chief this steve real helmet. If chief steve was at the uh the barnum fire <laughs> 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 Hey, listen, uh, he's, gonna, he's gonna like that one. You fuckers are gonna get to meet Chief Steve as soon as this uh, quarantine is lifted. We got a uh, episode where we're gonna do a little history on old firehouses and what they are now. Because Steve Chief Chief Steve is a historian, you're gonna get to see his smiley face, and I will bring the Chief Steve puppet. Dan Wilson coming in shit hot. Will there be a producer Pete T-shirt? You know what? <laughs> Good idea, man. Uh -huh. I know what the T-shirt will look like. Him not pressing the goddamn button when he's supposed to. <laughs> That's what hey, you know, speaking of pressing the button, <laughs> maybe him shitting out a stone or something. Yeah. Oh my God. I wish I was shitting it out. That would be easy. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Yeah. No, it's just a bunch of shenanigans in the chat as usual. You know. I love it. I love shenanigans. Actually, we have a shirt that says shenanigans, right, Roof? Yeah, don't cramp up. Spend some money. Spend some money. Things are shenanigans. Uh, life is better when you're up to some, right? That is yeah, what it on says. on the website. Shell out some cash. Five minutes don't work. We have about uh, four. We have four shirts uh, in the waiting presses to waiting to go. Uh, new designs. But, uh, as soon as the world gets back yeah. going again. It's a little tight. Yeah, we might even send Dan Wilson one for free because he's on here every day breaking my balls. So I like Donnie <laughs> yeah, like Wilson, Danny Wilson. What the fuck's his name? <laughs> Dan, Don, we we'll get him a free shirt. Shit yeah. hot. Let's see. So, shit hot. <laughs> the producer Pete shirt should have a stone on it. <laughs> <laughs> get him shooting a BB. <laughs> I'm telling you guys, it's it's getting salty. So uh, yeah, that's it, boys. All right. All right. So, that's so Thursday. They don't want to know the podcast me. Thursday. Sunshine Tommy Evans, funny guy. That's going to be pretty funny, man. Yeah, I got I some stories with him. Up. Tell all the guys we got on deck, bro, because a lot of guys have been getting back to us, and we will, we will be taking the show on the road. Boston first, I believe. We're going up to Boston. See my buddy Neil Mullane, who's a chief now. And who else is coming up on the show? Who? Uh, uh, you want you to give out names already? I mean, I don't know. Nah. A couple out there. Shout out to uh, you know the Z Man. Wants to come on? We'll so, wait for uh, very strong. So, uh, I just want to hit something up here one more, one more time. Rich Anderson's asking what the word of the day is, gentlemen. We, uh, uh, I got we, one. We, wait, wait, wait. No, no, hold on. We only do words of the day. <laughs> when we have a guest on podcast, but right. we're interviewing someone. That's the secret to that one, right? Because we want our guests to feel like comfortable as they're slamming back. All kinds of alcoholic beverages. So uh, that's the only time we do words of the day. After that, it's just uh, history segments like this one and so on and so forth. So there you go. Gonna do, I was going to suggest a, a first do at Pete's Toe Lady's Box. Hey. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we'll let that one go. <laughs> All, right, All right, fellas. So Thursday night, 8 o'clock. Be there. Be square. Have your drinks. It's going to be a funny show. Tommy Evans got a lot of stories. and He's going to be – I'm going to tell you right now. He's going to be, if you're a Kevin hater, he's going to be all over me, bro, because he's got the most stories about me because I drove him. I was a captain chauffeur for a long time. I drove him all the time. So he's going to have a lot of Coop stories, breaking my balls, blah, blah, blah. 
I drove him for a while too. I'm sure he has. Uh, I wasn't the I'm best sure driver. Sure, sunshine. He don't drink though, so have him get his roly poly colas ready. He can he can chug down some colas as we. Do I think he drinks tea. Is he still drinking tea? He used oh to yeah, drink he's a, a tea, tea drinker uh, with our buddy from mm. England. Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, How's your portfolio. <laughs> don't forget to do one major thing for us right oh, now. Please. Right now, as you're watching this, take your little thingy, hit the button. Come on, boys. There you go. And call subscribe. A subscribe. Call a friend. Subscribe. Call a friend. Get it going. Let's go. Let's keep it up. We got a lot of new segments coming out. Right, Pete? Yeah. A lot of new ideas other than the podcast back in the days. So we got a and question and answer you. coming up next Monday. Send yeah. your questions in. We have some big picture stuff coming in, guys. Um, seriously, like there's a, you know, we, we've been brainstorming what kind of products we can deliver to you guys. There's a lot of things on the table right now. None of this is possible without you taking your stinky little fingers and mm. hitting the damn subscribe. Including a uh, producer Pete shirt coming soon. I'm going to work on it. I'm getting it going. Producer uh, Pete shirt. <laughs> I love it. Put a gun somewhere on it and I'll buy it too. Yeah, all, right. Uh, all right. And you guys, you guys already know where to find us. Of course, it's youtube.com forward slash get and salty experience for the audio listeners. Uh, and then everyone on Instagram, that's where you're going to find out all the latest last minute uh, information and that's going to be at salty dog inc at salty dog inc on instagram and guys if you want to buy some cool stuff like a halligan bottle opener and a cool guy t-shirt or hat louis wearing right there that salty hat and that sweatshirt and so on and so forth i, I like the bunker gear toiletry bag that's my favorite person very cool bunker gear toiletry bags i think that's cool that you can get those at getting salty apparel.com mm -hmm. uh, guys I think we put another one in the books, Mink. And in the books. Guys, we love you guys. Thanks for signing on, bro. Do Thanks, it. Everybody. Hey, bro. We'll see, see you the big one, boys. Bro. Stay, Stay long, long ago. ago.